In this video, I want to demonstrate how to use P7Zip Desktop for Linux users. Now, if you found this video on YouTube, I will provide a link below the video where it shows how to use the program and how to install it. Now, before I get to showing you how to install it, let me explain a little bit more about what P7Zip Desktop is. It is a graphical user interface, meaning that you can click buttons to execute commands instead of using the command line. So it's a graphical user interface of the command line P7Zip archive for Linux users. So if you were to install P7Zip, that works with the terminal. And if you're coming from Windows or Mac, you're probably not used to using commands in the terminal. So P7Zip desktop, it has the graphical user interface to execute the commands of P7Zip. It's like 7-Zip for Windows users. So if you a Windows user and you're used to using 7-Zip, you'll feel very comfortable using P7-Zip desktop. Now here's a little bit more description about it and I just simply copy and paste this from the actual developers website. Here you can package and unpackage 7-Z files, tar files, zip files, and WIM. Now you can unpack a lot of different type of compressed file formats and here's some other descriptions as well. Now you can install this by using the snap package. You have to make sure that your system's set up to install snaps and if it's not you can scroll to the bottom and I have a link for the Snapcraft where you can install it via their website by clicking on the button here or you can click for your type of Linux that you have. In my case I'm using Ubuntu Mate so I would click the Ubuntu link and it would show you how to set up your system so that it installs snaps and then you could simply copy and paste that into the terminal and that's what I put here at the top. To install it you just simply open up your terminal copy this list of commands, place it in your terminal, press the enter return key, put in your password, and it will install that program on your system. If you later realize you don't like it, you can uninstall it by opening the terminal again and putting that command and then putting your password and it will remove it from your system. In my case, to execute the program, you can execute it through your menu and in this case I'm using the traditional menu so I go to application system tools and it uses the 7-zip icon but it's called P7-zip desktop and that will load the program. And Then I've got some illustrated pictures below showing how to use the program but I'm going to demonstrate that in this video so I'll scroll back up to the top minimize it and I will open up the program here. And I've already had it opened and minimized on my taskbar. Now let me show you this this is the actual program so if I go to help and say about you can see it's P7-zip but it don't say desktop it's actually P7-zip but the desktop just gives it this GUI the graphical user interface now as you can see across the top this is to add like if I wanted to uh, if I had a zip file these are folders and these are files if you look here these are the same folders and files that I have in my program. That's a folder 7-zip, there's the folder RAR, and there's the folder zip. And if I double click into this, that's the compressed RAR extension, that's the compressed file with a zip extension, and that's the compressed file with a .7z extension. And then here are files that I will be compressing to show you how to compress. Here I'll show you how to unzip or uncompress a compressed file. The only thing I really don't like about this graphical user interface, I'm used to seeing a little folder icons to the left of folders and seeing little icons representing what the file is, like seeing a little Adobe or some sort of icon representing what type file it is. Now when I click on this file, when you click on info, it's not going to give you information about a file. This gives you information about the file that's compressed. So this is not a compressed file. That Those files here are not compressed. As you can see, any of the folder or files within the folders are compressed. So if I go into the zip folder, here is a compressed uh, file that has folders, a file that has files inside of them compressed. So if I double click, these are the files that are inside the samples zip file. So if I click on one of these files, then I click info, it gives me information about the compression 
of that particular file. So if you click on a file that's in this window and you click info, more likely you clicking on a file and not a file within a compressed file, if that makes sense. So I can go up a folder, I can go back up a folder. So these are my folders and these are my files. Let me show you how you can create a zip file. You click the add button, but before you do, you select all the files that you want to add to your compressed file. If you don't select the files, it will select everything within this window. So it will compress those folders as well as these files. So I just want these files in a particular compressed file. So I'll click the add button. When I do, since I am in the samples folder, it will create the name of the folder name here. If you would like to change that, you can highlight the name and just over type it, but to make sure you don't highlight the zero, the dot, unless you put the dot back into it. But I'm going to leave samples there. That's fine for me. Now by default, I think it comes up with .7z as the default since it is P7z desktop. But you can compress them with tar, you can compress them with WIM or zip. Since I'm come from the Windows environment, I'm used to the zip file, the ZIP than I am the others. I have used the others, but I have more experience using zip. You can have different type of compression levels. You can uh, compression methods. There's multiple types. Your dictionary size, which there's, you can type in a size here and your word size. I'm not going to get too much into here, but if you had a very large file and would like to split it up, you could split it up by like DVDs here, like uh, or even Blu-ray disc. This is a very small file, so I'm not going to split it in volumes. If I wanted to create myself a password, I could put my password here, put a password here, and I could say show password to confirm the right, and then I could choose what method of encryption that I want and hit the OK. So I'll do that. So I'm going to come in here and write the word password as my example. I'll write password again. And then I would say show the password and make sure they're both the same. I'll uncheck that and I'll hit OK. And you don't see it doesn't confirm that it's done. But when I come here into this folder, here are the files that I selected and there is the sample. If I try to extract that, now I'm going to pull this over into the RAR. Now if I try to extract that and I say extract here, it's going to prompt me for my password. And if I type the word password, then it's going to extract it and it will create the samples folder because that's what it named it after and there are those four files and as you can see they're actually working files and I'm not going to double click each of those so that shows you how you can zip up a file and how you can put a password on a zip file and how you can choose the type of extension that you're zipping up now let me show you and I'll go ahead and close this out how to uncompress or unzip a file and I'll use these three as examples to start with I've made each of these my default uh, the P7 zip desktop as the default so when I double click it's opening with the program as you can see here this is the P7 zip so I can actually let me click back on here I can click the extract and I don't have to select all of these if I wanted to extract just one I could select the one but for all of these I could select them all in the hit extract or if I don't select anything if I hit extract it's going to give me a choice now to where I want to extract them to I can hit the drop down or I can click this and choose a folder since we are in the 7z folder this is where I extract them I hit OK and as you can see in the background that's why I didn't go full screen you can see that it extract those particular files in this folder so each of these are those four files that I had in the samples folder so extract them very quickly and I can delete these let me go into the RAR it's the same method now if you don't have it set up for default, but I do, so if I double click this, it opens with the program, but if you don't have it set up for default, you can right click, and when it says open with, choose your P7zip desktop, and it will open with that program. Like I said, you don't have to select these, you can, you can select each of these, hit extract, then hit OK. And as you can see here, it extracted all four files into this folder here. And like I said, these work very identical like what I originally had. So let me delete these so I don't have redundant or the same files over and over multiple times on my computer. Now I can go to the zip file. I can double click. 
Now, as you can see, if I hit extract, it's going to extract them all into this folder. But if I want to just extract this one, like if I compressed all of the practice uh, tests for my students and I only wanted to use one, I could hit select that one, hit extract. When I see it's only going to extract the one that I selected, and when I hit OK, it only extracted number two. So you don't have to extract all of them and then delete them all the ones that you don't want. You select the one that you want to extract and it will extract it. Like number four, there's number two. I can hit extract. As you can see, it's going to extract just number four and I hit OK and there's number four. So I can go back and do one and then I can go back and do three. So you can do them individually or you can do them all at one time. You can select them all or if you just hit extract, it extracts everything that's on this system or on this folder I'm sorry you can select them and delete them from the compressed zip file but you make sure you save it you can copy them to another location and if you want to test it it's going to simulate extracting them but it won't actually extract them into a folder so pkzip or not pkzip p7zip desktop is just the same as p7zip without the desktop like using the commands within the command line and if you're coming from the Windows environment it's like the 7-zip program that you use in Windows now I do have a dark theme so when you install it don't expect it to look dark it will look the gray look but if you change your theme it works with the theme of your system unlike the last archiver that I think it was the the B1 uh, zip program that I ex used the last time which is the B1 free archiver it doesn't work with changing themes it only has the gray look so that's an advantage if you are someone that uses a variety of themes uh, p7zip desktop will work with different type themes so hopefully this has helped you understand how to use p7zip desktop and have a great day